Welcome back to the Candy Colored Studio. I'm artist Katrina Berg. This is episode 198. And I have my beautiful friend Jessica Libor with us today. And I can't wait for you to meet her and get to know all the wonderful things that Jessica has to offer. So welcome, Jessica. Thank you so much, Katrina. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, this is so great. And I have to tell you that uh, we are doing like a West Coast, East Coast interview today. And that's always super fun. I love I love having artist friends that live all over the world and all over the country. And Jessica is one of my fairly new friends. But I'm telling you guys, she's amazing. And she has like the most... Yeah. Yes. And you have a beautiful, beautiful podcast that I love listening to. And it's going to be a real treat to have you here. So welcome. Thank you, Katrina. Yeah, and I really admire uh, your artwork and what you're doing in your podcast as well. So yeah, it's just a real treat for me to be here. Well, thank you. Well, I have to give you guys kind of a little, uh, I don't know, a spoiler that one of the reasons why Jessica is on today is because she has a special sale going on for her um, her premiere course. And so we're going to be talking about that, but I thought it'd be really fun for you to get to know Jessica a little bit. So um, keep an eye out for that. But Jessica, why don't we just jump in and you can tell us about your background, your family, where you live, anything you want to share. Oh, sure. Definitely. Well, uh, yeah, thank you for mentioning the sale on my course. So yeah, I created this course. It's called the Luminary Artist Academy, and it's created especially for uh, female artists. And um, you know, it's really for you to reach the next level of your art career, both energetically and, um, cause it all starts inside, you know, and then also, uh, practically. So getting into galleries, showing your work, making a living, it, it covers all of that in immense detail and like how I did it and like letters that you can use and, um, the steps that you can take. And it's very step-by-step, -step, but it also has like affirmations and meditations that I've created. Um, so there's like, uh, over a dozen of those as well as 250 workbook pages and 12 hours of video. So it's a lot of content for you to get to the next level. And I tried to make it as like vital as possible. It's like mm -hmm. everything that I needed when I like graduated art school is what I put into this course and it's really beautiful. And so, yeah, it's on sale until June 20th. Um, you can get it any time of the year. However, right now I'm doing a sale on it. Um, so if you wanted that before June 20th, um, you do save several hundred dollars. So um, yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Oh, absolutely. Um, and yeah, we'll, we can go, if you want, we can just go into detail now, or we can talk about it later, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, let's, we can talk about it more later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you, <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. So that's your little taste guys. And now that you have a taste of, of what's to come, let's, let's hear about your background, Jessica. Sure. Um, yeah, I grew up in, um, in the countryside in Pennsylvania and, um, so like we had a barn in our backyard, um, there were like horses my neighbors had and, um, and like sheep and stuff. So I did grow up in like the country, but it was kind of like a gentleman's farmer kind of like, it's not, it's not like people were like raising crops and like putting them in silos. It was more of like, people just like had a horse and they just like had a couple goats or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but it was it was a beautiful location, very um, kind of like kind of like a mix between rural and um, suburban. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have one sister, and um, she is two years younger than me. She's a wedding photographer, oh. um, so we both turned out really creative, yeah. and um, and we were both homeschooled actually. So nice. yeah, we grew up um, doing you know being homeschooled, but it wasn't. I don't think it was the typical experience being homeschooled because my mom was really invested in um, getting a very well-rounded education for us and making sure we were socialized and all that stuff. So, um, so yeah, we, we, we were involved with like a lot of drama clubs and choir and sports. And so we, there was, we were basically, we basically had a similar education to school, but um, the, the good thing is I was able to finish uh, two years in one. So I went to college when I was 17, actually. 
Yeah. And um, yeah, I did my undergrad um, and then I did my master's and then, um, yeah, I, uh, I dabbled in real estate a bit because actually I, so I got interested in real estate when I, um, I, I started showing at this gallery. It was called the Bazemore Gallery. It no longer exists, but um, it was a gallery in Maniunk. And the guy who owned it was like really into real estate. And he was just starting to paint as well. And he, I remember him like lecturing me on like, you know, real estate is such a key because it allows you to like so much freedom to do whatever you want if you like play your cards right. And I was really inspired by that. So I ended up getting my real estate license. I tried real estate for like a year and I like actually helping people find homes and stuff. And, um, I really didn't like it. I was like, I really don't like this, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> because you could spend, you could spend hour, you could spend weeks with somebody and then they could just be like, well, you know, we just decided not to move. You know? Yeah. Um, Do you feel like the skills though, that you learned from, like learning how to communicate with clients and the whole selling process, like it's so applicable to being an artist. And that's another it one is. of those things that, like you said, we don't talk about that in art school and in art classes. Yeah. And so that's, that's amazing. I'm sure it was beneficial to you, even though you're like, I don't want to do this. Yeah, I, it was beneficial. And one thing that I did like is I liked seeing the interiors of homes and I liked seeing how people decorate and stuff. And I, um, I actually, so I actually got interested in another part of real estate, which is flipping houses. So yeah. I flipped two houses, um, in the space of like, I don't know, three years uh -huh. and it is intense. It's really intense. Um, but when I did that, um, it allowed, it does allow you a lot of freedom because it allows you to like make a lot of money quickly. Mm -hmm. And when you have a cushion like that, then you, you can really focus on your art without like a, a lot of worry. Yeah. And yeah. because it does take a little bit for you to build up your art career and build up your reputation to the point where people are starting to come to you and ask you for commissions and yeah. uh, be interested in buying your work and stuff. So, um, it really did help me um, to create a solid base from which I could kind of build my art career. Mm -hmm. And, um, throughout all this time, I was also working as a makeup artist. Um, so, so I was doing that as well for Dior. Um, so I, I had a lot going on as yeah. well as trying to like, passionately build my art career. Um, so yeah, I was juggling a lot of things and yeah, that's kind of like the background of like the last like 15 years, I would say. That's so smart though, because I think as artists, it's really hard. Like you say, while you're building up your, your, just basically your name, your style and all those things, like you do need something to kind of support you. And a lot of yeah. artists will teach art classes or they'll do other things, but there's so many different ways that you can support yourself while you're yeah. getting to the point where you're just totally self-sufficient. And I think that's so smart to just like give us examples of other things you can do. Cause not everybody wants to be an art teacher. Not everybody wants to be right. an art professor. Although you are an art professor, correct? Um, sort kind of, of. well, the, the, I used to work at Harcum, but they discontinued the art program because oh. of, they didn't have enough high enough enrollment apparently. So, um, that's on pause for now. It may come back, but, um, but yeah, I, I was doing that as well. That's so, so cool. Um, that's one thing that I've enjoyed about your podcast is that you do bring in a lot of um, just different perspectives, which, um, I think a lot of the podcasts that I was listening to that it was new, if that makes sense. And okay. I love that. I love that. And I would just say for our listeners, the things that I've noticed that Jessica, that you're really good at, like your strengths, definitely mindset manifesting, and then just like teeth, like obviously helping people understand the style and understand like the background and the history behind things. And I think that that's really that's oh, really thank you. great. Yeah. That's yeah. So cool. Yeah. So, um, and it's interesting that you say that because I do think that as artists, like everything that we go through in our lives really informs our work so much. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, just looking at like, my, for instance, my background, like, so I grew up like in the countryside and like, you know, spending a lot of free time being creative because yeah. I was homeschooled and yeah. you know, reading under the apple trees and, um, you know, 
you know, having like all these animals around like cats and horses and goats and stuff. And, um, and so a lot of that ends up in my work because mm-hmm. it's such like a formative experience. Totally. And then, yeah. When I worked for Dior, um, which was like a makeup company, um, I think that that was really, it helped me hone my love of like, just like painting people because it was like literally painting people. Yes, (laughs) totally. Oh, I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I really enjoyed, you did this one episode where you talked about um, creating the experience. Um, And I'm, I probably am not going to use the vocabulary I use, but you basically talked about creating a show, but it's this whole experience. And I thought that was so great. In fact, I told my friend who's writing a book right now, I said, you need to listen to this episode by Jessica, because it, even if you're not an artist, if, because she's going to be trying to like show her, like just invite people to read her book. And I think that creating an event that's an experience with the music and the theme and all those things will totally help her like have a better outcome, like just presenting her book to people, which yeah. is amazing. So. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. An event, planning an event is one thing. May I feel like planning an event and making a piece of art, they are very different, but they're also kind of similar. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you are making a piece of art, it doesn't really have anything to do with the event. You're, you're purely focused on the art. You're purely focused on making that the most excellent piece of art you can. But then when you go to present all of it, Mm -hmm. I have seen in other people, um, and also I have created events where the response from the community and from other artists and from like people in the press, it's so much stronger when you combine different exciting elements, like not just art. So you, you have the music, you have, um, you know, other interesting elements, um, mm-hmm. like, Even like just live. the place. Yeah. The place you, you've um, had different shows in different spaces and mm-hmm. yeah, I think that helps too. Yeah. And you can really get creative with it. Maybe, you know, depending on your artwork, work with, somebody that has like a similar feel like i've worked with like a um like a florist who sculpts things out of flowers and makes like dresses out of flowers and um and she had like one of her works at my show and so just but that's just an example but you can use yeah just brainstorm like with some friends and think about like what would complement my work like what could be an interesting thing that like complements it you know and and Mm -hmm. it creates something interesting for people to do besides just look at the work. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, We had, um, there's an artist that lives in Maine, but she comes out here to park city and does a show like maybe a couple of times a year. And I think Mm -hmm. maybe a year ago, or maybe it was in 2020, it's kind of a blur, but she did this beautiful show and she does portraits, but then, um, almost like they have like headdresses of birds and animals, sometimes books, like whatever is it you love her work. I'll totally send you her link. Her name's Lindsay Aaron. It's her last Mm -hmm. name. It'll come to me. But anyways, um, I think her account is like Lindsay Aaron. But anyways, she did this gorgeous collection. And then a local florist came in and created floral arrangements that matched each painting. Oh, kind of like what you're talking about with your friend that mm-hmm. came in and did a piece that, that went with your theme. And I just, when, when I heard that episode that you did, I thought about what they did. And I'm like, that's mm-hmm. so amazing. And it was just I I hate to say just, but it was in a gallery setting. And I think that that's great. And it really elevated just the typical gallery event because there was two different types of artwork and it was so like, you know, symbiotic. It was so beautiful together. And so I feel like what you're offering and suggesting to people is taking it like to the next level because you're considering the place, the music, the food, the other, you know, creative people that you can bring in. And I think that's just so amazing. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And you know where I got this idea really was, um, do you know the New York Academy of Arts? It's, I, I know of them. I've never had to go to anything, but yeah. Yeah. So the New York Academy of Art, it was actually founded by Andy Warhol. So now it's one of like the places that realism is still thriving for contemporary realism. 
And I almost went there, but I went to PAP instead. But um, but I've attended their Tribeca Ball. So they have yeah. this annual ball. And it was so magical. It was so magical b- because the whole point of the ball is to sell the art that the students yeah. are making and to open up all the studios. And all the students make their, um, their studios so beautiful. And it's formal. It's very formal. So everyone is like in these beautiful costumes. And then they have different stations throughout the school where there's like interactive things. Like I remember there was like a swing. You could like swing on a swing and there was this beautiful backdrop behind you and um, you could get your pictures taken. Um, There was like these interesting drinks that were like, uh, they had like cotton candy. They made them look like clouds. Um, They had models standing stationed at different places that were like um, body painted and they had these like costumes to make them look like Grecian goddesses and stuff. Oh my gosh. And, um, and they had music, like live music. They also had a room where you could draw. So anybody who attended could draw. And they had a bunch of live falcons that were just like sitting on these nests that like a local zoo person brought in. And so you could just like draw these animals, like any of the guests. So it created this like atmosphere of wonder and excitement. Uh-huh celebration. And um, yeah, I guess it was so enchanting to me and so interesting. I was like, this is not the typical gallery show. Yes. This is like, it's meant to engage you, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I have to say too, I don't know if you can see very much of Jessica's gorgeous dress. And by the way, this episode, if you're listening in podcast land, you can see Jessica in her gorgeous <laughs> dress on YouTube, on Spotify. I'll also put it on Rumble. It'll be on my on my website. But um, I love too that the shows that I've seen on your website and stuff and also your Instagram, like you look like you're from one of your paintings. Like I'm sure you don't dress like that every day, but, but you literally like you live and breathe the whole essence of everything that you're creating. And I think that's so powerful and just charming. Thanks. Yes. It's Thanks. so great. It's so great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we should talk a little bit about your, um, your creative journey and even like any of your artwork that you would like for me to share. I'd be happy to do that as sure. well. Um, yeah. So last year I created a lot of work for a show that I had called wild love. And, um, I think it was really a turning point for me in that I started experimenting with different colors in my work and really embracing um, kind of like creating this alternate universe of um, intriguing and elevating um, landscapes and also like these characters, these female characters that um, really are stepping into their own autonomy and they're on a mission. And that's how I, that's how I think of them. There's there, these women know who they are. They're strong, but they're not overpowering. They just are. And, um, so yeah. Do you want me to Um, show some of your wild, wild love? Should I share some of the pictures? Um, okay. So right now I'm just on the exhibition photo page, but is there a better, is that a good page for me to go to, or do you want me to go somewhere else? Yeah, you can go to the um, exhibition photo page. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you just tell me if it's working. Let me see. How do we do this now? I don't know. It's not. Just give me a second here. Oh, there we go. I have to push another button. Okay. Now, can you see it? Kind of? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, go ahead and keep talking. And then um, you can tell me when to show something else if you want. Yeah, you can you can keep scrolling down. Okay. So that's those are some of the installation photos for a wild love. Um, yeah, so I created this. So you can see how like um, the colors are obviously not natural colors. Like you don't go out and see that the trees are purple and like um, the, I love the, it. The grass is blue, <laughs> but yeah. um, I wanted to really I wanted to really explore the emotional colors of the landscapes and, Mm -hmm. and also just create a feeling because colors definitely create a feeling. And, um, uh, yeah, you can actually, if you scroll up, okay. um, All the way up. And then if you click on just like my homepage. 
Okay. Or actually, you can click on artwork. Okay. To the left. One. Yeah. So that way you can see more of like the actual. Yeah, artwork. I love this one. This one is so great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I really do love your color choices in this series. I'm, mm -hmm. I love candy color. I love purples and pinks, and I think that they're not used. That <laughs> it is so powerful. Like just the change of a color palette to really evoke. You know, like yeah. this is very, very enchanting. Thank Absolutely. you. Yes. And so I use gold and silver leaf um, as well. So that's like moon gold actually is what I use. And it's, it's, it looks like silver leaf, but it's actually, um, it's actually white gold. So it's like really refined gold. It's and, really um, pretty. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't tarnish like silver does. So that's oh, the good. Oh, okay. That's like. Yeah. 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 Like this one's called the shepherdess and it's kind of about like taming your ego. So like the ego represents the wolf, but like if you tame it, then it'll like work for you. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's so yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And I typically hire models and I, um, I dress them up and pose them in different ways and then take the reference photos and then work from the reference photos. Um, but I also use a lot of historical references as well. Like, like that one, the shepherdess, I was looking at a lot of Flemish and Dutch, um, altar pieces actually from like the 15 and 1600s where they really distorted the landscape. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And cool. this one is called, um, uh, oh my gosh, what is it called? Epiphany. Um, well it's epiphany. Yeah. So it's based on, she's having some sort of an epiphany, but it's kind of, uh, reminiscent of the Annunciation paintings, which I've uh -huh. always found lovely. Yeah. Even yeah. her, um, her apron definitely mm -hmm. nods to that. Don't you think? I'm sure that yeah, was a yeah. conscious choice. No, and not a course, conscious choice. And the, the flowers, the lilies. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a great symbol for epiphany. Yeah. And then even the white flowers, what are those called? Do you know? I think those are the star of Bethlehem. Actually. Oh my gosh. That's so perfect. Look at that. Yeah. That's beautiful. Actually, like now that I'm saying that, I'm like, wow. And I didn't even plan that. <laughs> yeah. Like, like seriously, the symbols are just so good. And then even her, mm -hmm. um, her shawl could be a veil mm -hmm. and that's really beautiful too. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's amazing. That's such a beautiful mm -hmm. piece. And then here we have the lilies again. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. lilies. I just, they smell so good. Oh, they're so good. Wonderland, Wonderland. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I love mm -hmm. your play with the sky on this one. Mm -hmm. Just really powerful. And Thank how you. the light from the sky really just kind of enhances her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really beautiful too. Yeah, what a neat collection, Jessica. So this one was just from last year, huh? Yeah, that was just from last year. And this year I'm, um, I have a show in September. Okay. Yeah. And it is, um, oh, so here's another one. This one's called uh, golden girl. And so pretty. I love that. Yeah, but that one's a watercolor. So the, I usually oh, work yeah. in oil, but that's a watercolor. Okay. So was that watercolor gold too, or did you put the gold leaf and then watercolor around it? Um, I put the gold leaf in afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it looks really nice. Very mm -hmm. nice. And I love this one. I'm a big fan of mushrooms. So, <laughs> and deer, mm -hmm. I love deer yeah. and mushrooms like so much. So this one is one of my favorite in this series. Thank you. Yeah. So beautiful. And I love to like this, um, the feeling that, um, there it's kind of a nighttime scene, right? But the deer is be. kind of lighting mm -hmm. it up. I guess it could be, or it could just be dark mm -hmm. in the forest. Mm -hmm. But it's so bright and luminary. It's mm -hmm. really, really a special piece. Thank yeah. You. That one's really cool. Um, okay. So, oh yeah. So let's talk about your, while we're kind of talking about it, I did see that you can already sign up to come to your September show. Yes. Um, so I have a want, September show. Do you want me and... to click on that page while we're here? Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Was it? I'm trying to remember where I found if it. If you click on my logo in the center there, it'll okay. come up. Okay. Isn't it nice? Um, yeah. 
So I have a show and then scroll down. No. Do you want me to click yeah. on that one right there? Okay. Sure. So yeah, this is called preternatural, which is a very interesting word. It means like above and beyond the natural occurrences. So it's kind of like supernatural or um, wondrous. And I thought it was a cool name because it includes the concept of nature, but it also includes like supernatural occurrences. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of marry them together. And I don't know, I feel like it kind of like fits with my work. So this is going to be a show that is all new work. And I'm in the process of making it right now and spending every day making work. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going on a residency in July and I'm going to um, Chateau or Vaux, I think that's the way to, to say it, um, which is in France. And I'm, but I'm spending a week in Paris first and I'm really, really excited because I haven't been to Europe in years for COVID reasons, of course. But yeah. um, so I'm going to be making some of the work there, which yeah. I'm excited about. And then, but I'm also making some of the big stuff here that I need mm -hmm. to spend a lot of detail work on because I don't know how, I don't know how I'm going to work on a residency. I've never gone on a residency before. So, um, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, so I have a show on September 11th. It's going to be at the Tyler Arboretum. It's a beautiful location. And um, yeah, it's in there like, old refurbished barn. Um, it's huge. I really have to make a lot of work to fill up the space. And um, yeah, it's it's going to be a good time. So it's BYOB and uh, everyone's invited. So I'm so excited. Out. I'm actually going to share it with some of my friends that are close to you because I'm like, okay. if I can't go, I am going to make sure some of my friends can go because it just looks so magical. And when I, I actually clicked on the event, and it's such a perfect place. And I also, <laughs> I looked up Preternatural because I didn't know ab about that. When I read the definition, I'm like, oh, this is so perfect for Jessica. This is so great. So it's yeah. going to be a really, really amazing night. And I can't wait to see some more of your work in this series. It's going to be really you. great. Thank you. I can't wait to see it too. <laughs> I know, right? And yeah, hopefully you will be able to do quite a bit in France, even if it's mm -hmm. just to work through the ideas and get your like. Right sketches or, you know, yeah. just get everything planned out so that when you get back, you can right. just like jump in there and get going. Yeah. Um, so. yeah, exactly. I really want to have like a little pony at the event. Maybe. I don't know. You should, you totally <laughs> should. That would be so perfect. And then Wouldn't let it? them take little rides through the Arboretum. Yeah. Would they let oh you gosh. do that? I don't know. I don't know. I just, I've always wanted to like have like I don't know, like maybe like a miniature horse and like decorate it with like a little flower yeah. crown. It's just, just totally. fun. You know? Oh, it's going to be so <laughs> great. That's yeah. exciting, Jessica. Yeah. Okay. Well, while we're on your website, should we, um, should we go over and look at, or do you want to show more of your work or do you want to go look at um, your course? Should we take them to the Luminary Artist yeah. Academy? Should we do that? Yeah, we can look at my course. Yeah, we can look Okay. At so That's let great. me go back here and I feel like learn, right? I go to learn and mm -hmm. then um, let's see. Explore course. Would that be good? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll click on that and don't worry guys. I'll put all the links to all of Jessica's wonderful places in here so that you know exactly where to go. Okay. So yeah, just a reminder that the course is on sale till the 20th. And, but of course you can get it anytime. So if you missed that, yeah, don't worry, just jump back in there. Yeah. So it's on sale. Um, so basically it's on sale, but it doesn't devalue the course because what I'm doing is I'm dropping the individual course, uh, yeah. individual coaching portion of the course. So you just get the pre-recorded stuff and, um, you get to go at your own pace. Um, and by doing that, it drops the course price significantly. So if you want all the information and if you want all of the, um, basically all the steps, it's everything in the course, um, that you need. Um, it just doesn't include the two coaching sessions that I typically do with people who enroll in the course. Um, so, but you know, you can always schedule and order like a, uh, 
a coaching session with me separately if you feel like you want and need it. Um, so it doesn't like preclude you from doing that, but um, it just gives you access to the course at like a lower price than usual because it doesn't include the individual coaching. So Right. And so, so if, if you you're listening to this episode later, just jump in because mm -hmm. you'll get the same things. Plus you'll get the coaching calls, which will be exactly. great. Exactly. So, right. yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit? Um, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I started this course because I was coaching artists about how to, how to, um, overcome creative blocks and how to overcome, uh, self-limiting beliefs within themselves. And, um, and then I was coaching them on practical things about how to reach out to galleries, how to get into museum shows, that kind of stuff. And define their goals and do time blocking and set up a website and set up a mailing list. So I was doing all these things and I was doing them again and again. And I was like, man, I should just create like a course so that I don't have to keep repeating myself with the same exact thing. Yes. Um, because I was literally tutoring people about how to do these specific things like online. And I was like, if I had a course that encompassed everything that you need, then people could just buy it and um, they could go through it at their own pace. They could replay the lessons. Um, and I mean, this includes like tech tutorials and it has um, like letters that you can send to collectors that you can send to potential galleries, museums, um, any anything that you can think of like in the art world to build your career. It's basically all laid out for you and mm -hmm. in a step-by-step -step way. Um, and yeah, and there's many different techniques as well. So for instance, how to get represented by a gallery, I have like six different techniques that you could try. And so you, if one doesn't work for you, you have like a bunch of other ones that you could try as well. Um, so it's really about giving you a lot of options and really practical advice. But then the first part of the course is also about overcoming your limiting beliefs about yourself and what's possible for you as a person mm -hmm. and as an artist and, um, and changing your mindset around that. Because I, I spoke to so many artists who the reason that they weren't moving forward, um, or achieving the goals that they wanted to is because they didn't actually believe that it was possible for them. And that's like mm -hmm. the most fundamental step. Yeah. You're not going to achieve anything in life until you believe that it's actually possible for you and that you mm -hmm. deserve it. Mm -hmm. um, so, so really laying that groundwork and that there, there can be a lot of things that hold you back from that. And so we go into like, um, you know, childhood backgrounds, inner child work, um, you know, people who may have influenced you in a negative way, like um, a lot of people have like really damaging experiences in art school, actually from mm -hmm. professors who say cruel things. And then, you know, you mm -hmm. believe it because they're in a position of authority. Yeah. Um, so really undoing a lot of those things and taking ownership and uh, responsibility for your own desires and your mm -hmm. own um, needs um, as an artist. And yeah, it's about changing your mindset at first. And then you get into the practical stuff, because if you don't have the inner work done, you're going to run out of steam mm -hmm. um, and self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. And we don't want that to happen. So Totally. Yeah. Totally. Well, it's so interesting because I didn't go to art school. I actually mm -hmm. went to architecture school. I have a teaching degree. I did a couple different things. But when I started getting out into the art world and making artist friends, that was the number one thing that everybody had in common was anyone who went to art school had so many burdens that they were carrying so much trauma, mm -hmm. so many things, like you say, that they needed to do the inner work and just undo all those things so that they could move forward. And that was hard for me because how do you help someone when you haven't been through it yourself? Right. Yeah. Like I've had other traumas that I've worked through, but it also feels a little hypocritical. And so I think this is so valuable. Um, 
pretty much to everybody. <laughs> and that's, that's kind yeah, of sad. Absolutely. And I'm sure most professionals feel like they have to undo some things they learn in college. Not everything is usable, right? Not everything is beneficial mm -hmm. and positive. So it's good. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this is going to be amazing, Jessica. I can just tell that it's already helped so many people and it's going to continue to help so many people. So I'm so glad that you did this. I mean, it's just, like you said, this yeah. is something that you needed. It was definitely something that I needed when I started, just the practical things. Like there's so many things that I figured out, you know, in my career, but it just took a long time because they're there wasn't online courses for artists back then. <laughs> so it just, it takes a long yeah. time. And there's so many people that don't want to spend 15 or 10 years trying to figure it out. They literally would like to take a class like they did at school. And this is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. And I love yeah. that you can do it at your own space, at your own pace. So, mm -hmm. yep. It's really yeah. great. Everything I learned in the last 10 years is in this course. Yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah. so great. Well, that's awesome. Okay. Well, let me, um, I'm going to stop sharing for a minute and look at my notes to see what other topics, <laughs> because I'm, I'm like, this is so great, but I don't even know what else I was going to ask you. Okay. Oh, let's talk a little bit about your podcast. If that's okay. The inspired painter. And like I said, I mean, it's, it's been, I've already learned a ton just by listening to it. And I think that that's the beautiful thing about, um, having a podcast is that it's, it's totally your space. And then you can take all of the things you've learned and share it with others. And I think that's just really, really great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I started it because, um, because I was listening to a lot of podcasts. So I like to take walks every day. And I was listening to all these fantastic art podcasts and they were really inspiring and encouraging to me. Um, but then I was also having all these, I would listen to other like more motivational podcasts and they really made a difference for me mm -hmm. as well, not just like the art podcast. So I would like in my head, I would apply these motivational speakers to an art career and I couldn't really find a podcast that actually did that. And, yeah. um, yeah. um, although a lot of them do do more of that now these days, but, mm -hmm. um, and this was in 2020. So it was like during the pandemic and I was like, obviously we had a lot more time alone during the pandemic. And so I was listening to all these podcasts and then I thought like, you know, I could, I could make a podcast. I mean, like I have thoughts and, um, I had just started coaching artists and I was like, this could be a nice like supplement to this so that like my clients could listen to this as well. Um, so I just started, I just started like recording my thoughts and, um, uh, my own journey basically. And, um, yeah, it's, it's mainly about like mental health and, um, like positive mindset for artists, um, about many different topics within that. Um, but it encompasses business practices as well as, uh, mindset. Um, we don't talk too much about technique because I've found that it's not something that applies to everyone because everyone has such a different style as an artist. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, maybe we'll go more in depth in that in future episodes, but I guess I just found from working with different artists that the number one thing was not technique that held mm -hmm. people back. Mm -hmm. And if you go to a museum, it's not like every piece in there has amazing technique, yes. right? Yes. So why are these artists in there? Right. Um, right. And, after meeting a, some artists who really are at that level and they're exhibiting internationally and they're, um, you know, showing in all these different museums and stuff. The one thing that I can say goes together with all of them, like the one trait is not how correct their art is or how perfect they can turn the form on a cheek or how, um, how, how correct their colors are. It's, it's actually that the artist believed that they could do it. Yeah. And that, that they, they were able to that communicate level. that. Yeah, totally. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you're totally right. And I'm so glad you brought that up because I think that a lot of artists really tend to lose hope and just like beat themselves down for so many different reasons. Yeah. But you're right. If, if you talk to the people 
that are really doing well, they're not worried about those things. They know who they are. They know what they're sharing and they just share it. Right. Yeah. Unapologetically. And, yeah, exactly. And I remember like this was back in like 2016 when I had kind of just graduated art school and I was like trying to figure it out. I was like, and I, something clicked in me when I listened to this interview by John Curran. Do you know who John Curran is? Uh -uh. No. Okay. You'll have to Google him, but he's, yeah. um, he, you know, he shows the Gagosian, I believe. I don't know. Like he, he shows somewhere big. Um, and he shows a lot of different museums and the top galleries of the world. And he is, he, he's giving a talk at this, this lecture at this university. And I'm listening to him, listening to him, listening to him, and then the, um, talk about his work. And then the interviewer asks him, so why do you feel like, you know, some of your classmates, they made it to this top level. Um, so, and some of them, they're not even doing art anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, what, why do you think you kind of made it? Because I yeah. think that a lot of artists would love to be at the point that you're at. So yeah. why, why did you make it, would you say? And his response was so interesting. He said, um, you know, I think that, you know, I didn't make it for a very long time. He said, I, I was a house painter and I just kept working on my paintings and I was, you know, painting houses on the side. And, um, but I just knew inside of me, you have to have this feeling that you are glamorous and successful. It's you you are glamorous and successful and that, you know, just the world hasn't caught up to it yet. And yes. um, he's, he said, if you believe that internally, then it'll, it'll happen for you. That's so simple. Yeah. And yet so profound, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is. And you know, people can argue like, oh, it's so shallow to just want to be like glamorous and successful. It sounds <laughs> shallow. <laughs> um, but but he was honest. I mean, that's what he wanted and that's what he yes, got. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And, um, yeah. yeah. And you can, you can substitute whatever words you want. Like, um, yeah. uh, you don't have to be glamorous and successful. You can be like, um, you know, making a difference and, um, wealthy or, uh, you know, anything that you would like that sure. makes a success for you. Um, but it was like an epiphany listening to him. And I was like, Hmm. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, totally. Yeah. For me, I think the words I've been thinking about are peaceful and content. Peaceful mm. in what I'm creating, like finding peace in my creative process, but also content. And then mm. just let things, let the goodness come your way. Like you don't have to, you don't have to steal it from somebody else. I think that's another, what would we say? What would we call these these bad, oh, there's, there's a word for it, Jessica, maybe you'll think about it, but I feel like there's these lies that we tell ourselves, like if so-and-so has a successful art show, that means that I can't have a successful art show. If so-and-so yeah. gets, um, they get recognition for something, then I, there's no room for me, but that's not the case. It's not the case mm -hmm. at all. And that's mm -hmm. what's so fascinating that we allow these negative emotions and fears to take mm -hmm. over, like you said, the glamour mm -hmm. and the success and, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is that we really want out of life. And yeah. I think we do need constant reminders. And that's what I do love about your podcast, about some other podcasts. I think that we need those reminders. Even if we know deep inside, everybody needs to be reminded mm -hmm. that they're, you know, that they're valuable and that what they're doing is worth the time and effort. It doesn't matter what your career is. Everyone needs to know that they're loved and, and valued. Yes. So, yes, I think that's true. And, and I think that's the number one thing that artists need to recognize within themselves is that their artwork is valuable to treat it like it's valuable and, and other people will take their cues from you. Totally. That's so mm -hmm. good. So kind of similar, um, I don't know, similar things that, that people have been working through. I had a cute artist reach out to me. She was finishing high school and she said, what do you think, Katrina? Should I spend all this money and take out a big loan and go to college or should I just start? 
with local markets and workshops and, and classes that I can actually afford right now while I'm working. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's such an interesting question. And so ever since I've been asking all of my interviewees, because I feel like everyone has different experiences and different um, ideas. And what my hope is by continuing to ask this question over and over again, is that as we listen to these episodes, whoever it is, whether it's you, Jessica, or a different person that I've interviewed, that your heart will say, yes, this is the answer for mm. you. You already know that this is what you need to do. This is your path. So I'm just kind of curious because you have an amazing you background. You know, you did the homeschool. So you did something totally alternative and beautiful. You started mm. college early. You were a college professor. You also have this amazing luminary artist academy. You have your podcast. You have lots of ways for people to learn from you. So what would be your advice to anyone, whether they're finishing high school or they're like transitioning into a different career that maybe they're having like a, a 2020 realization, they don't want to do what they've been doing, you know? Yeah. Um, this is a really great question. I'm going to give you a really honest answer. Yeah. Um, okay. So for an artist who's considering they want to be a full-time art artist, but um, they're not sure if they should go to art school or kind of build things up more slowly. Yeah, I would say, um, what are your what is your goals? So, mm -hmm. is are your goals to there's because there's different pathways that you can go on. Is your goal to be exhibiting at galleries and mm -hmm. show your work and sell your work? through galleries and museums, is that like your goal? Or is your goal to um, to teach? Maybe you wanna teach at a college level or a high school level, um, or, or you're not sure of your goal. You're not sure, you just wanna get into the art world. Yeah. Um, or do you have a desire to say something with your art? Yeah. And I do think that anyone who's interested in art does wanna say something. So, um, if you're not sure, if you're not exactly sure, then I would say to continue, um, kind of trying different things because I will say that, um, going full force into art school is extremely expensive mm -hmm. and it's extremely expensive. It's like, it's like buying a house. Mm -hmm. So, um, so to think about that and how it will affect your life making these like $800 payments for the next like 20 years, you know? Right. Can you afford that? And there's no guarantee that you can, especially graduating from art school. And then they don't really teach you in art school how to make a living <laughs> from art. Just being That's, honest. It's true. Um, at least the it's traditional true. like uh, art schools, you know, like accredited bachelor's and master's degree programs. They typically mm -hmm. don't really train you how to do that. And so a lot of artists go in thinking, I'm just going to get lucky. I'm going to get with a big gallery. They're going to sell tons of my work. And then I'll just be like living the dream. Mm -hmm. And that only happens for like 1% of yes. people. Yes. And it can happen for you. Uh -huh. But um, you have to be honest. What are your expectations? What do you want to get out of this Um experience. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is you have to understand that not all art schools are going to teach you how to make art. Um, yeah. A lot of them teach you theory. Mm -hmm. They teach you, um, yeah, mostly theory. And then there's a lot of critiques yeah. um, in my experience uh, with a lot of different art schools. If you're looking for more um, if you're looking for more like how to draw and paint realistically, then I would consider ateliers like the Florence <laughs> Academy of Art, the Grand Central, um, Grand Central Academy, uh, GC, yeah, Grand Central Academy, um, places like that where you can go and learn how to paint and draw the figure, how to paint and draw still lifes, how to paint and draw anything, um, and you'll learn thoroughly how to be a traditional artist. Mm -hmm. And if you go to one of those places, you don't always have to do it full time. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to workshops and you can take like a once a week class or twice a week class. 
and not totally uproot your life, but still be learning these fundamentals. Right. Um, so you have to be honest about what you want. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, because everything has a price, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so, so whether it is going full-time into art school, you, you do have to pay that price financially. Yeah. Um, or if it's taking these classes along the way, um, you know, while still keeping your job, there's a price to that as well. And that is like not focusing as much on your art. Right. So, um, right. so it really depends on the situation, what the person wants. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing I would definitely say, no matter what you choose is to identify like three of your art heroes or heroines, and then mm -hmm. try to study with them. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so many good suggestions. What I love, I mean, this is obviously, you talked about how this is in your course, but this is a really perfect example of like how you work, Jessica. You like to offer lots of different solutions and just give people options. And I think that's mm -hmm. so valuable because as you talk, I literally saw like a flow chart. Well, are you this, <laughs> this, or this? Okay. If you're that, yeah. then go this way. <laughs> it's like, you just keep asking questions. And I think that's so valuable because the truth of the matter is just has vast and exciting as the art world is and so many different types of artists and techniques and mediums. Mm -hmm. The same goes for our art journey. And you did such a beautiful job of laying it out because I think it's really easy to think, okay, I want to be an engineer. Okay. I need to go to engineering school and then I'll choose between these few choices. But with arts, with art and the art journey, it just feels like so overwhelmingly vast. And I think it's really important to just be honest with people and say, uh, <laughs> there's so many possibilities. But yeah. I also loved how you basically said natural consequences. If you choose to go straight into art school in a really good art school, it's going to have a financial effect on your future for the rest of your life for at least 20, 30 years, however long it's going to take to pay off those loans. And so I think that's also important to, to consider. And I think when it all happens, after you consider all those things and you just listen to your heart, your heart will tell you, yeah. Which way to go. Yeah. Right. It will. It will. And, and you know, the financial cost can definitely be worth it for like Absolutely. What, whatever your goal is, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so. your heart will say, don't worry. You're, it's not mm -hmm. going to be a problem. And so you just listen to your heart and you just go for it. Yep. But thank you. That was wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess the last thing that we could really talk about, um, we talked a little bit about your residency. I can't wait to see, um, just to remind, I, you'll probably be posting on Instagram while you're there. You you'll probably be yeah. doing stories and stuff. So definitely yeah. um, start following Jessica. And I think, let's see, I think I wrote down some stuff. Uh, your Instagram is Jessica Libor studio, right? Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. can follow Jessica there. And then of course, keep an eye out for Jessica's solo show in September. That's going to mm -hmm. be great. That's going to be exciting. I'm really curious to see what you paint before you go and what you paint after yeah. you go. Won't that be interesting as well? Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited. Yeah. I'm really exciting. Well, awesome. Well, everyone, I just want to invite you to go ahead and check out the Luminary Artist Academy um, till September 30th. 20th? Um, 20th. Oh, yeah. Uh, three or four no, more days till June, June 20th. 20th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was talking about September too much. So the show is in September. The residency is July, right? July mm -hmm. is your residency. Mm -hmm. So, so many exciting things. Any other projects that you want to share that you have like on the horizon or hope to start in the future? Um, yeah. So I started this gallery called Era Contemporary and it's, um, it's to showcase mostly contemporary realism. And um, we're doing a show with the Lunar Codex. So any it's an open call and any art that's accepted into it is going to be put on a disc and sent to the moon in a time capsule to be there permanently. So if anybody's interested in that, you can also check that out too at ericcontemporary.com. That's awesome. And they can apply for that until? Uh, July 15th is the deadline. So like, okay. like a month. Cool. Yeah. I'll make sure and put a link to the lunar codex as well. That'll be amazing. Um, okay. So obviously keep an eye out and go, um, 
but subscribe to the inspired painter. That's Jessica's podcast. And then she also has a collector circle email list. So that's her email list specifically for collectors. So you can find out what's, what else is going on with her. And then of course, her website is jessicalibor.com. And I think, is there anything else that I should mention or links that we should? You covered it. Okay. It, yeah. And if, if there's anything I missed, please just reach out. I know that Jessica would love to hear from you. So again, thank you, Jessica. This was really, really a special, just a special time. And I'm so excited for our listeners to get to come participate in your course and your podcast and all the things. Oh, It'll be great. Thank you so much, Katrina. I really appreciate you reaching out and wanting to do this interview. And I'm really honored. I really admire your work as well. And I I'll have to have you on the podcast next. So, Oh, I would um, love to. That yeah. would be super fun. That would be super yeah. fun. Oh, well, good. Well, just to all of you listening today, we want to send a lot of love from Jessica and I to each of you. Mm -hmm. Have a good week. Goodbye, everyone.